Welcome to Raychem's series of training videos from the Electrical Products Division. This tape will show a laboratory installation of heat shrinkable splices for 35 kV extruded dielectric power cables. Complete written instructions are included with each splice kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing your splice. To make the splice, you will need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. The recommended torches are Raycam's FH2629 FH2616A1 and the FH2609 which is no longer available but is still being widely used. For your own safety, please pay attention to the following precautions before beginning the installation. Failure to follow these warnings could result in injuries caused by fire, explosion or electrical hazard. First, Make sure the area you are working in has good ventilation. Check all torch connections for leaks before lighting. This product is covered by a materials safety data sheet. Before installing any electrical accessory, read and follow the safety requirements and the written instructions. In addition, be sure to follow the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. In this program we will be splicing two 35 kV copper tape shielded cables together. Installation for wire shield, concentric neutral and lead jacketed cables is similar. To begin the installation First, select the appropriate splice kit and prepare the cables as outlined in the written instructions. Then, abrade and clean the insulation and cable jacket using an oil-free solvent. Next, place the nested tubes over a clean cable end and install the connector. While standard connectors are acceptable, Raychem recommends the use of rounded or tapered connectors. Once the connector is in place, deburr the connector and clean it and the insulation with an oil-free solvent. Now cut a one-quarter inch chamfer on the ends of the insulation with a cable prep knife. You are now ready to install the stress relief material or SRM. First, remove one side of the protective paper from the long strip of SRM. Then roll the SRM up with the paper facing out. This makes it easier to apply and prevents the material from sticking to itself. Now, begin wrapping the SRM between the connector and the insulation. As you wrap, Keep the SRM stretched to one half of its original width. Be sure that you fill in the gaps on both sides of the connector. Continue wrapping the SRM around the connector until it is slightly larger than the outside diameter of the insulation. On your final pass, wrap the SRM over the chamfer so it is level with the surface of the insulation. Then tear off any excess. For non-chamfered splices, simply overlap the SRM for one quarter of an inch onto the insulation. If the connector diameter is greater than the insulation diameter, wrap two layers of SRM over the connector. Next, you will apply the diagonally cut SRM at the edges of the semicon cutback. To do this, Lay the point of the SRM on the insulation and against the edge of the semicon cutback. Then, stretch the SRM to one half of its original width and wrap it until it is the same thickness as the semicon. Overlap and taper the SRM onto both the insulation and the semicon by one quarter of an inch. Discard the excess SRM.
After the SRM is correctly applied, slide the black stress control tube over the center of the connector. Then, using an appropriate torch, adjust the flame until it is about 12 inches long. Use the outer 3 to 4 inch tip of this flame to heat the tube. Beginning at the center portion, work the torch around the circumference of the tube with a smooth brushing motion. Be sure to heat the entire circumference, including the underside and the back. When the center of the tube has shrunk, slowly begin moving the torch to one end of the tube while holding it at a 45 degree angle. This preheats the tube and forces air out of it to assure a smooth, void-free interface. Once you reach the end of the tube, move the torch to a 90 degree angle and make sure that the tube has shrunk smoothly and has a uniform wall thickness. Repeat this procedure for the other end of the tube. Next, post heat the entire tube until it has a smooth surface. This indicates that the SRM is adequately softened. If the black tube has cooled before you install the red insulating tube, begin by reheating the black tube. Remember, when installing multiple layers of tubing, the previous layer should still be warm before positioning and shrinking the next layer. Now, slide the red insulating tube over the black tube. The red tube is used to help increase the insulation thickness of the splice. When the red tube is centered over the splice, use the same shrinking technique that was used on the black tube. Again, begin at the center and work towards first one end, then the other. Continue heating this tube until it has a smooth surface and a uniform wall thickness. Next, apply the red sealant to the splice. This sealant will prevent moisture from entering the splice through a damaged cable jacket outside the splice area. Begin by butting the red sealant against the installed tubes. Now, using a light tension, wrap the sealant around the cable semicon until it is level with the red insulating tube. If you are using a drain wire, unishield, or concentric neutral cable, you now need to install an aluminum deflector onto the cable semicon. To do so, simply remove the backing from the deflector and wrap it around the semicon at the edge of the red sealant. The next layer of the splice is a dual wall black and red tube with raised ridges running the length of the tube. The red inner portion of the tube is insulating while the outer black portion is conductive. Because of its size and composition, this tube will take longer to shrink than the previous tubes. If the red tube has cooled, Heat it as necessary before centering the dual wall tube over the joint. Next, apply the torch to the center of the tube as in the previous steps. Again, be sure to heat the entire circumference of the tube. Once the center of the tube begins to shrink, gently twist the end. A slight resistance indicates that the center is adequately shrunk. You may now start to work the torch to one end of the tube. Continue to move the torch in a brush-like fashion around the entire circumference of the tube. Stop shrinking when you are four inches from the end of the tube. Now return to the center and shrink the other end of the tube. Again, stop four inches from the end. Return to the first end and shrink the final four inches. Then go back to the unfinished end and complete the shrinking of the tube. In some instances, the dual wall tube may not shrink down to the cable semicon even when correctly installed. 
Finally, post heat the entire tube for an additional minute. Inspect the tube both visually and by touch to ensure that the ridges have disappeared. If they are still present, continue heating the tube until it is smooth. If you are using drain wire, unishield, or concentric neutral cables, you should now remove the aluminum deflector. It is all right if some of the deflector remains under the black and red tube. There are four different methods for connecting the ground braid, depending on which type of cable you are installing. For more detailed information on these methods, please refer to the installation instructions. On metallic tape shielded cable, begin by fanning out the end of the ground braid. Then attach it to the metallic shield using the spring clamp. For drain wire or unishield cable, first pigtail the shield wires together. Then crimp the ground braid onto the pigtail with the connector included in the splice kit. For concentric neutral cable, simply crimp the ground wires together using an appropriate connector. For lead sheath cable, the ground braid is soldered onto the lead sheath. Next, wrap a layer of half-lapped shielding mesh over the entire splice and tie it off. Shielding mesh is not required for concentric neutral cables. For jacketed cables, you should now prepare the cable for the wraparound sleeve. Begin by cleaning 8 inches of both cable jacket ends. Remove or tape over all sharp points in the joint. Next, remove the backing from the wraparound sleeve and center it over the splice. Install the metal channels and channel clip onto the butted rails. Finally, shrink the wraparound sleeve beginning at the center and working toward each end. Post heat the entire sleeve for an additional 30 seconds, concentrating on the area around the channel. The splice is now finished. Remember to let the splice cool before moving it or placing the cable in service. Let's recap a few of the important points contained in this program. First, for your own protection, please remember to observe all applicable safety requirements. Carefully follow all cleaning procedures using an oil-free solvent. Be sure that you fill in the gaps between the rounded or tapered connector and the chamfered insulation with the stress relief material. When shrinking the tubes, make sure that the underside and back are properly heated. And finally, Post heat the entire tube and check it for proper installation before proceeding to the next step. By following the written instructions and the information contained in this program, you can be confident that you are installing a durable and reliable splice. If you have any questions regarding the installation of Raychem's 35 kV splice, please ask your local Raychem representative 
or call Ray Kim at 1-800-327-6996.